I've had people try and shoot me, right? And like that farting bumblebee as the bullet goes by. Whoop! I've had people try and split my skull. I've had people try and stab me, right? I've had people, you know, all these things, had people try and run me over. Um, those are momentary flashes of terror. Okay. Um, watching the legal system in action, what it has become, has become really serious fear. I've never had a time in my professional life where Americans have been more concerned about their own self-protection. What crime statistics can you count on? We also talk about the Rittenhouse case. We also talk about self-defense, where it stands today, where we think things are going in the future. This is my part three with Mark McYoung. Uh, Mark, again, you know, for those of you that uh, are new to him, he's probably one of the most prolific writers in the world of self-defense. Um, all spectrums of it. He's got so many great books. The one I have up here is What You Don't Know Can Kill You. Excellent book. Safety Doesn't Have to Be Scary is also another great book on how to live a life to uh, you know protect yourself. Uh, Mark just is one of those unique communicators. He really, really knows how to put the subject out in a very understandable way and also in a very intimidating, scary way at times. He doesn't... Uh, he doesn't hold back. And in this conversation, we kind of go everywhere with it. We really wrap it all up as to, okay, how does this all affect us? Knowing that we know we get skewed information. We know that, you know, uh, self-defense is not looked upon as uh, desirable uh, when it comes to the people in charge. It's very scary for them. And how do we go forward? What do we conduct ourselves and what's the hope for the future? So... Without further ado, part three of my interview with Mark McYoung. Talking about self-defense in the legal system, I'm really dating myself. There was a very cheesy and bad 1970s science fiction movie called Logan's Run. I remember that, yeah. Right. Do you remember the, the star that when you're 30, you're put to death? Yes. Right. But you have a chance for renewal. You have a chance to be saved on the carousel, right? And all the people would come in and watch the show of people being renewed where they'd fly up in the air and then they'd be burned out, they'd flame out. Um, then later, Logan is talking to the computer after it's messed with him and he asked how many people have renewed and the answer is zero. Okay, it's a false hope. Okay, in many ways, there's a lot of people who have false hope in our legal system. Um, and it's kind of like Logan's run. If you think you're going to go into the thing under and be protected by self-defense, you've got that. A more modern, if you're not a sci-fi sci geek like I am, um, analogy is this is like promising cattle going into the slaughterhouse that one out of 10 of them will be saved. Okay, and it's like, no, you if you go in that way, you're screwed. Okay, um, but again, there's so many people who believe that the system will take care of them and protect them. Okay, um, that they don't really bother learning how to take care of this, these things themselves. Right. Now, I'm hoping if people begin to realize that, hey, they got a problem, they're going to go out and buy my book, Safety Doesn't Have to Be Scary. Okay, because that gives you, this is what to look for, this is, you know, how to avoid it, all these things. Um, but that's a start into working your way towards, you know, okay, fine, you want to, if you want to avoid this stuff, here's how to avoid it. But you're going to have to do something about it. Yeah. Okay, you're going to have to actually put in the effort. And I think the, the real appeal for, you know, a dictator would be he will restore uh, law and order and I don't have to do anything. Right. Right. I can go back to my content life and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, that's terrifying. Yeah. 
right and you know how far down that road are we i don't know okay and there's a lot of things that you know please please pull us back from the edge on the other hand there's a lot of people who seem hell-bent on accelerating us towards that point you know and i mean if you're being in an area that is being burned by rioters and the cops aren't doing anything about it fire department can't get you there you know that used to be something you watched on tv exactly right is that coming to you know your hometown yeah. i watched um god protesters okay cops come up hey you you're you know you're acting weird kid starts running kid grabs a gun starts turning around and they shoot him yep. okay so it goes oh no oh no you know we must riot we must or we must protest that's bad enough but then they showed up at the cops home we, we have that happening here in Vegas. Real? Okay. We have, we have two cops that, that got in, in a shooting. Uh, people dis uh, disagree with the, the DA also. is They can't get to his house, but they protest him every day over over these shootings and the, the, that came in. And these guys are doxed out. And there's very little we can, you, know, you can do for it because it's technically legal. But, man, is it just, I mean, you got your kids, you got everything. You're just right outside the house every day. Well, and I mean, by the way, this, when this happened down in Colorado Springs, there were a whole lot of the protesters walking around with, you know, quote, assault rifles oh, yeah. and hitting them at the people in the neighborhood as they're marching to and from the cop's house. Right. So, you know, this is not something that happens over there anymore, you know. This is, you know, this stuff is being delivered to your house now. Yeah. Okay. Now, the thing is, how do you communicate to people and say this is a growing danger without sounding like a paranoid? Right. Hold on a second. I'm having a discussion. Knock it off. <laughs> um, yeah. Various and sundry. You know, the rule of keep the critters out while I'm on. I, no, it doesn't. Yeah, no, no. They go on their own. Luckily, I locked myself in a part of the house where they can't get to it. Yes, yes. Well, no, I, I helped them doing that. But, <laughs> you know, somebody with opposable thumbs operated a doorknob. So I'm not, out. Names, I'm not pointing fingers. <laughs> but so, I mean, how do you how do you tell people that? And the answer is very carefully. Okay you begin to help those who are willing to listen right uh communicate and you know tell them that this situation is bad but here are ways that you can actually effectively handle this stuff okay and you know, this comes back to like, say, martial arts training. And, you know, people think that they have a, you know, martial arts training is often a Greek read. Okay. It's my mojo bag. It keeps me safe. It's my talisman. There are other people that their talisman is a gun. Yeah. Right. You know, I'm safe. This is all I need. No, this is a really complicated thing that, you know, the more, you look into the more you understand and i mean don't let it overwhelm your life but understand that you know this is some bad you know we've got problems right now yeah. right and i mean the economy is eh, okay but you know if things happen like the supply chain issue right um you know, are you in a job where people will want what you have? Exactly. You know, um, that could be, you know, that's a problem. 
I mean, I'm, I'm thinking that we're going to get back back to the old days of uh, flash mobs. Yep. Right. And I mean, people, oh, that's where y'all get together and dance. Like, no, the appropriate term is flash rob, where people charge in, rip this place off. And if you happen to be in the store when that happens, guess what? <laughs> you get trampled. Yeah. Right. So, you know, do what you can, right, to ensure your safety. But a big part of that is understanding the danger. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, my, my behavior's changed, uh, and I always, you know, I always look to avoid anyways. But um, that's yeah. certain, that there's certain things I just won't do anymore. You know, I won't go certain places. I won't. Um, you know, we, we just make better choices because you don't want the alternative. And it's funny. And what's interesting to me is I find the people that are more highly capable and trained in this and, and been doing it and have no, could probably operate in those places. Fine. Uh, the, everybody chooses to avoid right now. And that my problem, my problem is, okay, but what, what if it gets to the point to where they, we don't have the choice to avoid anymore. And, and then you let people that don't want to be bothered you know, start, start taking it, you're going to accelerate everything, you're going to accelerate, you're going to accelerate that tyrannical takeover, you're going to accelerate. And, the, and it's, it's hard to say this stuff. Like you said, not be dismissed by the people that just don't want to believe we're even close to anything like this, they think it's all going to be fine, everything's going to work out. But uh, I think probably because I have clients all over. Yes. And, and then I, you know, my, I got uh, half, my instructor crew is from Australia, you know, they're all great, great guys and what they've had to experience going down and what we've seen across the board, everybody's saying the same thing. It, oh, yeah. They're all, they're all saying, hey, but this is happening. And the other thing is the gaslighting of not showing both sides of everything. Yes. You know? yes. And, and that to me is just this huge recipe for disaster that nobody's yeah. really taking into consideration. Right. And also, you know, something that is very important is if we have the chance to withdraw from the situation, we're not going to fight. Okay. That really is like, hey, I don't have to go downtown to that restaurant. Okay, I can take my business elsewhere. That one's fine, up to and including moving. Yeah. You know, I can move out of the city. And by the way, the cities are hemorrhaging. Yeah. Okay, and there are people who are just bailing out and taking the tax base with them, right? As they're going, though, other people are flooding in. Um, and, you know, the big question is, okay, you know, look at your city. Okay, how many people are bailing out versus how many are coming in and what kind are coming in? Okay, I've been telling people to get out of the city for about 10 years now. Yeah. Okay. Um, and if you don't move to a, a different part of the Metroplex, okay, if you stay there, um, a lot of times getting caught in something is because you didn't get out of there soon enough. You did not withdraw. Okay, like I'm going to hang on to this property. I'm not going to let it. It's like, no, sell it, move. You know, um, because there are certain element areas that are likely to go up in flames. Okay, um, if you live there, you're going to get caught up in it. And, you know, people talk about Portland, you know, the never ending riots in Portland. You also talk about like the Seattle free zone or yep, they yeah. their name into whatever that is. Um, but it's like, why are you still living in the city? Okay. Like, I don't want to live in Seattle. I don't want to live in Portland. Yeah. But they did do a really good line in uh, the show, the ranch. It's like, well, I want to go to Portland. Like, Why do you want to go to Portland? The only people there are the ones who can't make it in Seattle. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, you know, how well is your social network? How well are the people that you can rely on? You know, um, do you have, 
it, it's yeah problems can happen violence can happen the thing is big explosions of violence are way less of a problem than ongoing rising you know that you like more and more and more and more and more you know people get crazier and crazier and things get more wicked and i mean that's the slow boiling of a frog right, right? now you know do you prepare for the big da -da -da? or do you stop and think hey you know there's a lot more crazy out there a lot more people who are violent and hostile out there and i need to kind of figure out how to work with that and at the same time, understand that the police and the system aren't there to protect you anymore. Say, so yeah, it's on you. Yeah. Okay. And that there's so many small things you can do, like not going to those areas anymore, um, that really have very little impact on your life. So you don't have to become a survivalist with the helmet and the gun, you know. No sandbags um but you do have to start making better decisions and planning for things not always being so nice what you would dovetail us with everything that we've we've been talking about and it's just so strange when i when i reached out to you and and we started this this conversation i had just come off an event i've been doing it for like 10 years big group they go out and, and very wealthy group uh mm -hmm on there and, and nice people really really great people always great people as a matter of fact it's kind of hard to get them to train during the week we have a five-day event and um we have them only for part of the day and the rest of the day is super positive so they're all crazy you know and yeah, and, yeah I, I gotta tell you mark this year completely different nobody even even the main message was basically hey winter's coming yeah. um it is serious and they're they were saying hey if it looks like history we're looking like an eight-year cycle of this and they're talking and these are people that literally two years ago uh, was the last event because of covid um two years ago this would have been unthinkable some of the stuff they were talking about majority no. of them getting out of cities majority of them buying self-sustaining properties where they have their own water their generators uh their uh, food and living in communities where they know like, like they're literally creating compounds of communities where yes. it's known entities that they're doing. And these are not tin foil hat people. These are very, they're changing their financial port, port, portfolios, what they're doing, everything. And at that level, that's when it really hit me was, this is what you're not hearing. This is not what you're not seeing. This is what not, it's not being covered in the news, what people actually do in response to this. And for this group to be that way, that's when I really said, okay, you know, when I was looking at my book, I go, I wanna be really, really dialed in on anything that I'm going to be sharing right now, because I don't believe what I'm seeing right here. Yeah. And, and this is really, really interesting is that it's what you're talking about. These are not the crazies that are doing. They're real people that I've known so many people that have literally moved out of the city, lifelong liver live, you know, lived in LA or lifelong lived in, in Chicago or, or New York. And they've just said, yeah, that, that's it. They're, they're moving yeah. to their families. They just, it was enough for them to see hey, how quickly, I think what's the shock people is how quickly supply chains can be shut down, how quickly uh, local services can just be shut off, you yes. know, for political reasons or for whatever. And then you're left to deal with that. Yes. And, you know, more than that, you're left, it's, it's hard enough to, you know, deal with shortage. Okay. Now I, I'm originally from Los Angeles, but for two years, I lived up in uh, Spokane as a kid, right? Not only in Spokane, but outside of Spokane and what was called the snow belt. Okay. Since that time, people go, oh, you're a prepper. It's like, uh, no, actually, I live in a place where we have this thing called weather. Exactly. <laughs> we have winter. Yeah. Right. And with that, you know, comes like losing power, losing all this stuff. And I mean, um, my home, aside from being collected, by the way, not decorated, I mean, all the things you can see in the background have stories. Well, that was when I was in Australia, you know, um, but the thing is, there's also like, oh, look at those pretty storm lamps. 
Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, for, they're for a reason. Yeah. You know, that's a wonderful pond. Uh-huh. Right. Um, I had a girlfriend once back in LA. We were talking and she just got woken up to the possibilities. She goes, you know, I just found out that if uh, there's a major di disaster in LA, the National Guard is going to shut down the roads and you can't get in and out. It's like, uh-huh. And she goes, you know, the only way out would be like on a motorcycle. Uh-huh. Like the one outside the back door. Uh-huh. And you'd have to like be near the National Park like we are. Uh-huh. <laughs> and you'd have to know the fire roads like you do. Uh-huh. And it's like, you've thought about this before, haven't you? It's like, uh-huh. So great. Right. But again, it, it's the it, less concern about big events than it really is the slow boiling of the frog. Yeah. And, you know, rising crime, whether it's being statistically supported or not, you know, the crazies, the hostility, um, unchecked you know and i mean part of the thing about the people not just leave me alone is antifa went up to a small town in colorado a couple of years ago and they were going to you know they were holding a support the blue rally in this town and antifa showed up to mess it up things did not go well right right um you know there's certain areas that if certain political agendas and behaviors are pushed, they're not accepted. Some places they're tolerated, some places they're not. Now the question is, have you moved into one of those places where it's not? Right. And um, the tolerance for that kind of behavior and being told you have to rely on the police to solve it. And if you don't, you'll be punished it's getting to the point of that's no longer really a viable threat. No. You know, it's like, okay. I mean, really would Kyle Rittenhouse be prosecuted if he hadn't turned his himself in? No. Okay. So. No, I mean, that, that's, that's the crazy thing about it. I mean, when you looked at it, I, I think I saw it and it wasn't, it was an, it was a fairly objective. It's hard to say that, but objective news source. That was uh, that came out with a report saying uh, prosecutors that were that were uh, queried, I think it was like yeah. high 90s, like 98, 99 would not have brought that case to, to court right. uh, based on just on what they saw, just so just on the, just on the basis yeah. of, of, of the evidence there, not even talking about everything that was withheld. Well, and but again, there's also a lot of them wouldn't, but they might not have the choice. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, yeah. what, okay, you know about the face palm, mm -hmm. right? The, I mean, that was, I got to admit, one of the greatest nonverbals in trial history. Yeah. 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 The second one and out of the same thing was uh, Binger was going after the politics of, uh, of a witness and, you know, objection and judge listened to the argument for both sides. And he made a ruling and said no. And he said, look, this is not political. Okay, now this is the judge speaking, but the camera was on Binger. Okay. Right. And his reaction, I'm not gonna tell you what it is, but I will tell you, um, if you drunk the Kool-Aid that this is not a political you know, situation, um nothing's going to change your mind if you believe that it is absolutely you just got confirmation but anybody in the middle who saw this guy's reaction you know, a whole lot of people shifted over that way <laughs> right because right. it really was somebody decided up above to pursue this okay and if you're lucky that won't happen to you but we can't say it won't so again it is just how far can things be pushed before it gets ugly we don't know and 
you know, will it be like eight years? God, I wish it wouldn't happen at all. Right. But, you know, I didn't get where I am by denying what's happening. So, so the, the you know, the, the, the reason I, you know, the reason I wanted to do this talk and what, we, what we've done is one, first of all, I thought it was very, I, I just want people to hear what you shared with me about statistics. I thought that's, especially mm -hmm. right now with statistics being thrown around so much that this is just key. The other thing was um, shattering people's belief that being in the quote unquote right is all you need to be worried about. Meaning if you think it's there, it's, there's a lot more nuance to it. There's a lot more you have to educate yourself on. And especially now, because even successfully defending yourself in a situation that usually you'd be totally fine. in, there is, there is huge resistance in many different municipalities for anybody that takes self-reliant action like that right. and they don't want to encourage it and therefore they will find ways to get one of those seven felonies on you right and let's also point something out let us talk about the scum de la scum okay they know the system can't you know it's basically become toothless all right they really don't hesitate about acting Okay. If they get away with it, they get away with it and they know how to get away with it. Where is the pressure being applied? And that's a really important question because I was reading a um, rather interesting argument where, you know, talking about the hardcore radicals aren't aiming for the opposing side okay what they're actually trying to do is take over the middle that's their target okay now i bring that up because you know who are they going to prosecute If they're if the, you got Chicago DA letting five gang members walk away because it was consensual, okay, who are they going to go after for defending themselves? Well, they're going to go after they're going to go after the citizens because that's where the biggest threat is to them. And well, the threat would be the threat would be if if we are going to stop, you know doing what we've normally done in the past and, and, and protect a society from these elements in, in a rational way. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden society doesn't see that. Well, we got to keep everybody in check because if people start taking things into their own hands, like the criminals have, but they've taken their own self-protection in their own hands, that's a hard thing to control. Yes. And, and if you encourage that, if momentum goes on that side, you're going to have a lot of that leave me alone population just absolutely sign up yeah and i i mean this is like i really wish they weren't driving people that direction yeah. right but again and i mean it's funny because in so many ways you know i don't know if i told you this in our last conversation but my mom in los angeles uh failed to clear a red light the intersection right they hit her with a $950 fine, right? Yes. She could afford to pay it, so she got hit with it, right? Um, you know, it's that whole thing of you must listen to what we say, but they're really falling down on it. I mean, I had a, an incident where it took me, and no lie, it took me five months to get my car registered. Okay. Um, basically, what it was, my wife and I decided to, you know, get joint, you know, dual ownership on, on, on the vehicle. It had been her car and it's like, let's, you know, just put my name on, on the slip. Five months. And it was like, well, can't you use a kiosk? No, this is one we need to. And they kept on screwing up and giving bad information, et cetera. And I mean, 
I started two months before this was due, right? By the time it was at the tags expired, right? I had to fight for another month before I got a letter from the DMV that said, well, he actually is trying, but there's problems, right? And the problem was them. Right. Right. Um, but yeah, I was driving around for, with expired tags for three months. Jesus. Right. And it's sort of like, <clears throat> and you're the one who's telling us you're going to take care of all this. Right. So, yeah, I can see why people are beginning to not trust what is happening out there and what they're being told. You know, um, I mean, who are you going to believe, the media or your lying eyes? Yeah. But, and that's just it. It's getting to the point to where the media was given the biggest benefit of the doubt. And now it's just, I, I mean, they're at a lower, a lower, percentage rate of people even paying attention to them and anywhere else but the problem is that the, those narratives are still just it's okay. all anybody's mimicking right now it's, it's all anybody in power is mimicking for the most part are those same narratives regardless of how ridiculous they have been exposed you know and you know people are stuck in they're going to be the ones that are facing the realities of it yeah okay and you know, how do you communicate to people that bad things are coming? Well, actually, you can't. But what you can be is there for those people who wake up, kind of like that gig you were going to, where, you know, before it had been fun and games. It's like, yeah, it's interesting to know. But now it's like a lot yeah. more grim. Yeah. And, and we're seeing that a lot. But I, I well, well Here's, here's a couple of things, Mark, because I think this is a good place where we can probably stop for now. Um, okay. Where on your Patreon, do you still have the uh, the the 20 uh, modules that you have on dealing with police on that? Yes. Okay. Um, so, so I'll I, make sure we drive people there. I'll make sure I have that that done. Um, and then, of course, your book is, is, is critical too to that, which we pushed last time. I'll absolutely push it out this time. More but, specific as to which one. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I know. I know. The safety book that you talked about. Oh, safety doesn't have to be scary. Yeah. yeah, safety doesn't have to be scary. I think it's absolutely critical for people. I mean, no, listen, I, I always make sure they, they have a plethora of options of, of all your stuff because it's, it's just excellent and well right. thought out. What, though, just in closing comments, I mean, you know, you've been doing this a long time. You've been, you did it on the, you know, everything from the, the physical aspect of it, you know, really, really hardcore up there. And then you moved more, you still have that obviously, but you, you moved into the idea of looking beyond that, looking into the law, interacting with people, interacting with the, with law enforcement agencies, where you're at today, where would you say at any time in your career, is this probably, is it safe to say this is probably the time where you're most concerned for these types of situations, especially when it comes to citizens? I've had people try and shoot me, right? And like that farting bumblebee as the bullet goes by, right? Oh, you had Mexican for lunch. <laughs> um, I've had people try and split my skull. I've had people try and stab me, right? I've had people, you know, all these things, had people try and run me over. Um, those are momentary flashes of terror. Okay. Um, Watching the legal system in action, what it has become, has become really serious fear, okay, because it, it has gone so strange, and I mean, this is, I'm, st just because I'm scared doesn't mean I'm not out there fighting, right, right, and I mean, cases, yes, I'm working on it, I'm informing people how to handle it, this makes me very scared, um, but also, one of the things is, when I was out in the streets, I had to live with a vendetta. Okay? And I mean, the cops were a problem, but they weren't the worst problem. Right? You want a truly unpleasant experience. When you've just thumped the guy and the cops are there, 
And the cop looks at, it, at him and says, do you know who did it? Right. And you're standing right there. All he's got to do, mm, and you're going to jail. Right. And instead of looking at the cop, he looks at you and goes, no, I don't. Right. You know, you're going to have a bad time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because he and his buddies and his family are going to show up. Oh, yeah. You know, I, you know, I grew up with that. And yet that is also moving away from that to talk to talk to people in middle class who don't have to deal with vendetta and now saying look this is possibly with the doxing and all this crap going on that's coming back in you know um when people when protesters show up at your house or walk by your house carrying rifles okay that's not a good sign no. okay um, you know, yeah, my concern is, and I, I mean, I've been through riots, that's not news. Okay. Um, but I'm seeing people getting really, really growly and that is very concerning. Um, and it's not, it's not the tinfoil hat crowd. No. Right. And it's, but there's a whole lot of people who are actually under the impression that because they're in a mob, they have power. Right. And that also makes me concerned because who's pushing the mob? Okay. And that I don't know. And, you know, I'm, it sounds like I'm putting on the tinfoil hat, but, um, yeah, there's some really, truly terrifying stuff going on. Yeah, and now, and you know, the, what's so funny about that is, is the the whole idea I have on that is, it's not the tinfoil hat because it's you're seeing it, you're actually seeing. It. I mean, these these things that were you know, the preview of preppers before, you know, or like waiting for Armageddon to happen. Yeah. And yet in the last year, we've seen more, we we've seen more real Armageddon type situations. I mean, you know, I can't imagine what it's like to be a young mom with kids in the car and a mob surrounding and you're calling the cops and they're saying, I'm sorry, there's nobody to send. Yeah. You know, and, and, and all of those types of things that, that are there that we're all aware of. And you, we put ourselves in those positions. What would we do with our family? And people are thinking about this stuff for the first time. Right. So what do you have? You have 11 million new gun owners, which is that and alone is scary. Uh, mm -hmm. Cause God knows what they're going to, you know, do. listen, most people just don't, they think it's a, it's a talisman. And right. Somewhere else, yes, I know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yes, and people are getting concerned, and you know, the problem is we are still in the all is well, all is you know. Yeah. Um, nothing and, to see. Yeah, nothing to see. Move on, and the other thing is, we people are, and I cannot stress how important this is. People are losing faith in the institutions right yeah. and you know the problem is they don't know how to operate without those institutions and that can get ugly yeah you know um but yeah it, it needs you need to pay attention because you know this stuff can land in your lap and before Really, if you weren't living a certain lifestyle, you didn't have to worry about this stuff. Right. And I know this because I lived that lifestyle. Mm -hmm. um, I had to worry about it. You don't. Okay. But now when I'm talking to people, I'm having to explain to them that, yeah, this really can just show up in your neighborhood, right? You can turn the corner and find your car surrounded. Okay, you can, you know, turn the corner and find a crazy homeless guy who, you know, who's strong arming you because the cops would, in the old days, old days being two, three years ago, take them away. They're not taking them away anymore. Right. Um, you know, yes, the crazy drug addict, you know, doing that. I don't know if you heard, um, I think it was in Seattle. Talk about a study and stupid. Um, 
pulled family pulled in to get um 7-eleven homeless encampment car got broken into and the idiot drove in drove over to the homeless encampment with his wife and newborn baby holy shit yeah well wait wait there's more okay because he was going to get back his Bluetooth and the sneakers that they had stolen, right? He gets jumped by five guys, not only somebody with a pole, but somebody pulls out a machete. Okay. He goes, uh oh, jumps in the car. And I mean, I, again, <laughs> if I was the wife, I'd leave him there, get out <laughs> the baby. But he jumps in the car, and as he's driving out, this guy jumps in front of the car and gets run over. Okay. Now, at this time, the, the DA is not prosecuting anybody. Okay. Again, consensual, you know, but it's like, right. hold on a second. Rob, you know, rip off and then machetes and poles and, and somebody died. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And what are you doing about it? Well, just another day in Seattle. Yeah, it's incredible. Yeah. So, you know, figure out where the really bad spots are and be somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah, and it's just that it, what's funny, too, is I I would still get emails from people saying, hey, Tim, uh, my wife and I, we're, we're going to do this. this we're, gonna, we're thinking of going to this protest and, you know, I'm whatever age I'm at or anything. I'm okay. And I think I'm really ready. And, and hey, the training really helped me with it. I go, he, did you pay attention to anything? <laughs> anything you learned? My whole, the whole idea of, you know, not looking for it. I, I said, why would you do that? There's many different ways you can show support mm -hmm. without having to put yourself in physical harm, you know, and it has nothing to do with you and your little group. It has to do with who else might be coming in there and, what, and how quickly it can turn. You're going to bring your wife to this too. Yeah. Um, you know, it to me is just people, the emotion of wanting to support one side or the other, it makes for such bad decisions on personal safety. Yes. It's, it's absolutely astonishing to me some of the stuff that's been shared with me over the, uh, the last year and a half. People who I thought were really, really smart put themselves in some incredibly dangerous, willingly. Yeah. You did. Incredibly dangerous situations. You know? Yeah. And I mean, but again, Okay, remember, violence is fun. Violence is exciting yeah. as long as you're the one doing it to somebody else. Exactly. Right? It's like, oh man, I'm watching this thing. I mean, I, you know, going after Rittenhouse because he dared to put out a fire of a bunch of people who were pushing a dumpster that they had set on fire into a gas station. Yeah. Yeah. Why are you somewhere? That people are lighting dumpsters on fire and pushing them into gas stations. Right. Right. You, you should be home watching Netflix. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, but again, I mean, even my little town here in, uh, in Colorado, okay, they had a Black Lives Matter protest. Okay. And I was like, oh, this I got to see because, you know, no, I'm going to drive by. I'm just going to look. And what I was horribly offended by was seeing the number of mothers with children at a protest. Yeah. What is wrong with you people? No, it's insane. It's like, we used to say, uh, being in Vegas, uh, it's shocking New Year's Eve, the number of people that be on the strip with strollers it's freezing out with a little kid at two in the morning yeah desert cold winter yeah. yeah 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 stuff like that and then the same thing they bring these kids to these potentially dangerous you know scenarios where, where they'd be trampled they'd absolutely be trampled oh, yeah you know, and so that not to talk about you know the random uh, the random gunfire or anything that you know could could happen you know um one of the things in uh, forms of terrorism in places where they are used to shooting is you walk by and you don't have a gun all you do is take a string of firecrackers light them and drop them let it all happen and create a stampede yep. i mean again it is just 
you know, watching this behavior going on, and I mean, going back to Rittenhouse, they're battening down the hatches. Oh, as we film this, it hasn't been decided yet, but they're battening down the hatches in case, you know, for rioting. They're getting ready. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah and they, they, we haven't even talked about the idea of the jury intimidation on this, you know. Um, uh, you know, knowing full well, I mean, they already, the, the judge already nailed somebody for filming the, the jury. And then there's all that going, that, 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 that blatantly has been going on. The jury, you can't really, it, it's a form of tampering, but it's just the social pressure that's being put on. People to, I totally understand it. I get it. You know, you don't want to be responsible for having your town erupt. You right. Know? You know, if all you have to do is sacrifice this one guy, well, sacrifice him. Yeah. You know? I mean, I mean this kid, so these guys don't show up at my house. Yeah. yeah. Right. And yeah, it has gotten to that point. And, you know, the media can hi- try and hide it, but they're not doing a really good job. No, no. You know, I think some of them are losing heart that way. Um, it's just getting hard. But for us, but listen, I, I really appreciate this conversation. And I'm looking forward to the feedback we're going to get from this, um, because this is a, a really much needed topic for people to understand. And right. Um, right. I, I really, I really appreciate your time uh, for this. Yeah. And obviously, uh, in the in the show notes and everything, we will be driving everybody to your site. And um, you know, with everything that we talked about today, and uh, hope to uh, hope to have another conversation real soon. Good enough. All right. It has been a pleasure being here. All right, my friend. Okay, that closes out my series with Mark McYoung on crime statistics, the legal. Uh, you know, the legal system that we deal with the current state of affairs when it comes to self-protection, self-defense. I mean, I really appreciate Mark taking the time to sit down with me once again and just go over this. And again, I can't, uh, cannot emphasize how important it is that you check this guy out. His books are just, just fantastic. Uh, what you don't know can kill you. Safety doesn't have to be scary. Those are two that I recommend right off the bat, but there's lots and lots of other great information. All the contact information is in the show notes, uh, but please support Mark uh, because he's doing great work. Now, listen, also, I'd like some support as well. It takes a lot to do these videos, so please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Share it with your friends. If there's a particular video that you really liked, send it to everybody. Let them know. Um, I really appreciate that. And also, go to timlarkin.com. Give us your email. We will give you a free masterclass so you can start putting together your own self-protection strategy for you and your family. Until next time, stay safe.